Hello, my name is Shelby Black and today I'm going to be talking to you about diet culture and its effect on the economy and mental health. Diet culture is essentially the idea that our culture and social media influence us to want to lose weight and pursue fitness routines in order to look a certain way or have a certain appearance that society deems as attractive. Whether this is Kardashian curvy or high fashion thin, essentially you're pursuing diet and exercise not because you want to be healthier, not to because of health concerns or to improve well-being, but instead to be what is considered to be attractive. Many, many industries profit off of this. Obviously, the weight loss industry does. They were worth $72 billion as of 2019, according to research and markets. Obviously, Nutrisystem, the Atkins Diet, places that sell keto foods, they all profit off of making you feel unattractive at your current weight. Um, next up, you've got the gyms. Obviously, if you are coming in there buying a gym membership, whether you ever lose any weight, gain any muscle, it doesn't matter to them. You come in, you pay your money, and they're profiting off of that. And another big one is the fast fashion industry and just fashion in general. According to re the Statista Research Department, department. The apparel industry has a peak projected growth of 6.2% in 2020 and has been growing since the 50s. Oh, buy our jeans. They'll make you look thinner. Buy, our, buy this dress. It's going to make you look taller and slimmer. Um, these leggings are going to make your butt look, big, look bigger. They profit off of selling you clothes that are going to make you look the way that you think looks best because of our culture, because of who is the most famous because of our celebrities, because of social media. They profit off of you feeling that way. And that's why they market their clothes to you in that way. Another way the economy really affects diet culture is dieting properly is expensive. It's hard to have a, a physical trainer. It's expensive to buy the most high quality foods, to go to the farmer's market, to shop at Whole Foods. And a lot of times, low-income people, they end up using more unhealthy methods. And these can include anything from smoking to exercising obsessively, skipping meals. Um, Yao Ting Lo and the Graduate Institute of Life and the World Health Organization assert that higher food costs are a barrier for low-income families to healthy food choices. And this includes healthy food choices for dieting purposes. Um, simply stated, how many times would a low-income family shop at Whole Foods as opposed to shop off the dollar menu at McDonald's? It's nothing bad about them. It's just the fact of the matter is it's expensive to diet properly and to do it the healthy way. Um, another large factor in this is mental health. You know, if you can't afford to do this the right way and you're skipping meals all the time, you're obviously going to not feel your best. And... Mental health plays a huge role in this. In a study published by the National Library of Medicine, nearly 75% of women between 16 and 25 reported fear of weight gain. And the same study suggests across all genders and ages, the fear of weight gain and dieting were closely associated. What this means is our teenagers fear gaining weight the most, and these are probably the this is the age group with the most going on. They're looking towards creating their entire life and they're constantly fearing gaining weight and they're still growing at this point. So you've got a bunch of teenagers dieting who really don't need to be dieting and it's incredibly harsh for the mental health of these individuals and it just doesn't benefit society as a whole. And for the next part, it becomes a reoccurring cycle. You diet you fear weight gain, you diet, you fear weight gain, it becomes a constant cycle and it continuously draws you in so that the people who get drawn into it, the fashion industry, the weight loss industry, the gyms, they constantly make money off these individuals and it never ends. Um, but these individuals, the worst part about all of this is not just dieting for unhealthy reasons. It's the fact that so many people take on unhealthy dieting control methods. Um, the, youth, the use of at least one unhealthy weight control method was reported by 
of women and 17% of men, which includes skipping meals, smoking, and taking laxatives in a study by Newark Stainer at the University of Minnesota. Essentially, one in five women take on some form of unhealthy weight control method, and some even go as far as smoking, which is cancer-causing, in order to lose weight to look a certain way because social media in society says it's attractive. Not because they fear having diabetes um, or being unhealthy. This is incredibly draining on mental health and it hurts our entire nation and the whole world because you have a generation of women and to a degree men who are constantly under this pressure to lose weight. In a study headed by Brenda Malkins at the East Carolina University studying the diet, dieting practices of college females, participants believed that they would be at an attractive weight if they were 94% of their current weight for normal weight participants and 85 and 74 of current weight for overweight and obese females, respectively. The study also found that 9% of its participants reported smoking to lose weight. This means that even normal weight people, at least in this study, but I think it can be applied broader, feel like they would be more attractive if they weighed less, approximately 94%. And overweight and obese want to lose up to a fourth of their weight to feel more attractive. And people are taking on smoking just to lose weight. It shows that diet culture is out of hand and it's toxic for teens, youth, women, and men all across America and across the world. 